There we go. All right, so um, I guess the only one that's missing right now is Catch, and I'll keep my eyes peeled for her. So the Karuna Mudra is the gesture of compassion, and it's meant to cultivate compassion, not only for ourselves, but for others. So I think that's a very appropriate mudra for today. Um, it, it means, Karuna actually means compassion, which is translated as the ability to see all beings, just like ourselves, ultimately seeking happiness and release from suffering. This mudra supports our heart, respiratory system, and immune system health. It relaxes the muscles of the chest, face, and jaw, which helps us to reduce overall stress. Now the mudra is a little bit funny, but um, it reminds me, I don't know whether you remember, we did the Kapuda mudra before, which is the mudra of the dove. This is a little bit different. We're gonna curl the fingers of the left hand in. So you're gonna make like a little cup motion, and then you're gonna turn that hand towards the heart, and then you're gonna take that same movement with the right, and the left fingers are gonna come right at the base of the fingertips of the right. So left hand faces the heart, right hand faces the others, and then the left thumb comes over to the, the middle finger, the base of the middle finger, and then the right thumb is alongside of that. So can everybody see that? Okay, and it, as always, if for any reason this gesture feels uncomfortable, please feel free to release your fingers and hands down onto your thighs. So just, um, I invite you to gently close your eyes, feeling into the sense of compassion that this mudra symbolizes. Focus on your breath. Take several natural breaths, feeling the sensations awakened by this gesture. Notice how your breath is gently directed into your chest, instilling calm and serenity that unfolds from deep within your heart center naturally. As you attune to your heart, you gradually develop the sensitivity that allows you to embrace yourself, life, and all other beings compassionately. Take several breaths to reflect on the extent to which you are able to offer compassion to yourself by acknowledging all of, you, that all of your actions that were ultimately an attempt to find the love, support, and security that are the essence of your true being. Attuning deeply to your heart center, offer compassion to yourself, honoring your journey wholeheartedly dissolving all self-judgment, shame, and guilt naturally. As you embrace yourself compassionately, you naturally enhance your ability to offer loving kindness to those you care for deeply, embracing both their positive and challenging qualities. Bring into your heart the image of someone you care for deeply, releasing any expectation of how they should be creating a space of openness in which their transformation and yours can occur more easily. As you offer compassion to yourself and to those you care for deeply, you gradually develop the ability to offer compassion to those with whom you experience separation or difficulty. Bring into your heart the image of someone you find challenging, perceiving their authentic being rather than focusing on their actions and beliefs. As you hold this person within your heart of compassion, clearly see that all of their actions are based on a need for love, support, and security, even if those needs are expressed inappropriately. By seeing this person compassionately, your feelings of judgment, anger, and resentment are released more easily, allowing you to see this person and yourself more objectively while creating safe and appropriate boundaries. Now open your heart of compassion to all beings, honoring each person's journey, recognizing that all of us are moving within the limits of our understanding toward a vision of unity. And then as you feel ready, slowly release the gesture, taking several breaths to rest within your heart of compassion. 
As you feel ready, you may gradually open your eyes, ready to offer more compassion to yourself and the world around us. So I'm gonna scoot back and um, I'm also going to tell you that I um, <laughs> had a little bit of excitement here this morning. We have an HVAC guy who's two rooms over from me because our furnace seems to be going on the fritz. So hopefully there's not going to be any, any uh, noise or interruptions. He's done what he needs to do in this room because this is where the fuse box is. So if there's a break, I just want you to understand it's nothing serious. We've got it all under control. So let's just find a, a moment to center, feeling our feet connecting with the floor, noticing how the feet are aligned, the ankles and knees are in alignment, knees and hips, hips and shoulders, and then maybe bring those shoulders up towards the ears, back and down. And let's bring a focus to the feet. After we've been focusing on our heart, it's always good to ground ourselves. So let's just come up on our toes and then back on our heels, lifting the toes. Some gentle movements, just feeling that as you come up on the toes and back on the heels, just notice how the feet connect with the floor below you. And then on the next movement, after you've completed, pause the movement of the feet, extend that right foot forward, the foot sliding across the floor, and then we're going to lift the toes so you're feeling a little bit of a stretch underneath the, the bottom of the foot, and then you're going to release the foot down and drag it back in. And then we're going to take the other side, lifting the toes, feeling that stretch in the toes, maybe spreading the feet wide, or the toes wide, sorry, and then release the toes back to the ground, pull it back in. We'll do it once more on each side, extending forward, spreading those toes as you lift the foot, and then release the foot back down, bringing it back in. And then we're going to come back forward, spread those toes, release the foot down, and come back in. And then maybe just march it out, feeling the connection of the feet with the floor. And then pause the movement of the feet. Now let's bring our attention up to the upper body. We're going to do our neck rolls or neck movements. So on an inhale, we're going to gaze up towards the ceiling. On an exhale, we're going to release the chin towards the chest. A gentle up and down, yes movement. Inhaling up. And exhaling down. And then take three more of these movements at your pace. Taking as long to linger as you like or speeding it up if that feels better. And then when you complete the round of three, just return the head back to center. Now we're going to bring the arms into the movement. So as we inhale the right arm up, we're going to turn the head to the right. Or head to the left, sorry. Right arm is up, head is to the left. Exhale, head comes back to center, arm comes down. And we're going to take the left hand up, turning the head to the right. And as always, if sitting feels uncomfortable and you want to do these movements standing, please feel free to do so. And then we're going to take this again, total of five times, so you may be starting your third time. Just count for a total of five. And then when you complete the round of five, we're just going to bring the head and the arm, or the head back to center and the arms down. And then for the final movement of the neck, we're going to take that right arm out to the side as we drop the left ear towards the left shoulder. Left hand is down by the side. So you can feel a nice stretch in the side of the neck, maybe out to that shoulder. And then back down. 
and then taking the head to the right as the left arm comes out. Coming back to center, taking it again to one side, and then the other side, and then three more times. Again, feeling free to linger as you like. Just remember to pair your breath with movement. And whenever you complete the round of five, just return your head to center, allow the hands to rest down by the side. Okay, now we're going to do our arm movements, and I know there's a couple people that have had some shoulder issues, so just take it to where it's comfortable for you. Don't, don't feel you have to do the full range of motion. Let's bring the palms together at the heart center. Then we're going to open those arms up wide. Inhale, bring the palms together at the top, and then exhale, coming back to center. And again, we're going to do this five times. If you need to pause at any time or take it, to a different level. Again, it's your practice. Do what you need to do. Take care of yourself first and foremost. And then when you complete the round of five, just return the hands back to the heart center. So that was our salutation arm. Now we're going to spread that love and compassion to the world by making a great big heart. So we're going to flip the hands, fingers are pointing down. We're going to inhale, drawing the shape of a heart as the hands come up and back down. And then the base of the heart as those hands coming back together again. Palm, or palms are out, back of the hands together, inhaling up and exhaling down. And again, three more times. Take it at your pace. And then whenever you've completed the round, just bring the palms back to the heart center. And we're going to relax the left hand down. We're going to bring that right arm, or the right fingers to the right shoulder. We're just going to bring that shoulder up, back, and down. 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 Release the right hand down, and we're going to bring the fingers to the left shoulder, same movement, up, back, and down, up, back, and down, up, back, and down, up, back, and down, up, back, and down. Now fingers to both shoulders, we're going to take it up, back, and down, up, back, and down. Maybe you hear a little snap, crackle, pop, that's normal, you just should not be feeling any pain. And then when that feels like you've eased up the tension in the shoulders, we're going to do elbow kisses, bringing the elbows together and then opening wide. Bringing elbows together, open wide, elbows together, open wide, elbows together, open wide. Now we're going to bring the left hand up, palm is facing in, right hand is coming right on the forearm. So we're going to press the hand as it's going towards the left wall. So we're bringing that hand backwards a little bit. And then we're bringing it back to center. And then we're allowing the wrist, bending from the wrist, the fingers to point towards the uh, wall on the right side. So again, we're aiming those fingers towards the wall on either side. So just gentle movements, taking it back and forth a few times. And then we're going to circle the wrist of that left hand. And then we're going to pause the circle. We're going to bring the left hand now to the, the right bicep. Right palm is facing in. And we're going to do the same movement. So back of the, the fingers go back towards the right wall and then come forward towards the left. Just gently 
a horizontal kind of bending of the wrist, if you will. And then after we've done that a few times, we're going to circle the wrist in one direction, and then the other direction. And then we're going to allow the right hand to rest over the left. And again, shoulder issues, be mindful of this. We're going to inhale the arms up, and then exhale back down. Inhale up. Exhale back down and last one. Inhale up and exhale back down. Release the hands down by the side. And now I'm going to come forward so you can see the finger movements a little bit easier. So we're going to spread those fingers wide and we're going to do our, our claw and beak and paw routine. So then the fingers come together, we go to our beak, then we're going to do our claw and then we're gonna do the paw, okay? Fingers wide, come together, beak, claw, and paw. Fingers wide, together, beak, claw, paw. Once more, fingers wide, beak, claw, paw. Now we're gonna stretch the fingers, and we're gonna remember this movement, because as you know, we're gonna be doing somewhere over the rainbow and that's one of the movements and then we're going to stretch the wrist then again on the other side stretching each of those fingers and again stretching the wrist now since it's our last class it wouldn't be complete without the wawa dairy move so here we go we're going to do our wawa dairy bring the, the left hand over to the right thumb and we're going to just milk that thumb, creating a massage-like sensation into the thumb. Then the index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky. And then again, other side, massaging the thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky. Then we're going to play the piano. And then we're going to conduct the orchestra. And then we're going to release the hands down. I'm going to scoot back again. So let's do our... Um, Let's have our final cocktail hour for our friends in Sweden and it'll be tea time for those of us in the US. So we're bringing our hands into a tray and as always, your favorite beverage is in each of the hands and it's filled, you don't wanna spill it. So the aim of this movement is to make sure that we're keeping the palms up and not tilting in any way. We're going to inhale those arms coming up again for the shoulders. Just take it as far as you can on that one side, bringing the fingers together at the top. And then exhale. Don't spill your beverage, bringing the fingers in towards the torso and back behind us. And then coming forward, taking the hands up and overhead. Fingers come towards one another and then coming back down in towards the torso back behind us and we'll take it one more time right at the starting position inhaling up and overhead exhale coming back in and then back behind us and then your choice if you want to sip your beverage you can bring it up on either side or you can just toss it across the room and let it all shake out shaking everything out now upper body arms really letting it all feel nice and loose before we go into our archer move. Now for those that are standing, if you wanna do this with a warrior two feet, please feel free to do that. So we're gonna start with the right foot out and the um, left foot uh, pointing forwards. If this is uncomfortable sitting, both feet can be in mountain in front of you, so your choice. So we'll start, since we're offering warrior legs, we're gonna do it 
two times on the right before going over to the left. We're going to inhale those arms up. We're going to turn the head, gaze over that middle finger. And then we're going to turn the three fingers in, the middle finger, ring finger, and uh, pinky are folding in. Index fingers pointing towards the wall, thumb is towards the ceiling. We're making a fist with the left hand and we're drawing our bow back, coming over to that right shoulder. Draw the bow back. Feel the stretch in the front and the back of the body and breathe. We can all be the goddess Diana, hunting our prey. And then we're going to press the arms out to either side, really feeling that stretch. And then we're going to take the arrow in the right hand again, making that hand into an arrow, making a fist with the left coming across to the shoulder, draw the bow back and breathe. And then let's release the hands down by the side, bring that right foot in, let's turn the left foot out, or feet together and mountain, your choice, inhale the arms up, pressing the hands towards either side of the room, turning the head as we make an arrow with our left hand, and then we're fisting the right hand as we bring it across to the left shoulder, draw the bow back, Breathing fully and deeply. And then once again, let's press those hands out to either side. Once again, left hand is the arrow, right hand comes across as the bow, draw the bow back. Now let's bring the hands down to the side and the foot in. Then we're going to press those hands out again to either side. Let's bring that left arm across and right arm underneath to stretch the shoulder. And then once again, pressing out to either side. Right arm comes across, left arm underneath, stretching the shoulder. And then releasing the hands down by the side. We're almost done the shoulder movements, <laughs> so there's a break here. Um, I, I was thinking of you because there's so many shoulder movements in this first part of the class. Okay, we're going to do our tricep movement. So again, you might want to not do it on this side, just see what feels good. So we're going to bring the palm of our hand to the shoulder blade on the right side, bringing that um, giving that elbow a little help if it wants to get towards the ceiling. If it doesn't go there, that's fine. Left hand now comes to that right elbow. And then we're going to exhale, taking a little lateral bend over to the left. And then back to center. And then bending over again. And back to center. And once again, over to the side. And back to center. Release the left hand down then the right and now for this side bring the hand to the back of the shoulder or to the top of the shoulder or even right here whichever feels best for you finding a good position for that elbow and then exhale coming over inhale back up exhale coming over inhale back up and last one exhale coming over Inhale, coming back up. Release the top arm down and then the other arm. Now let's take those shoulders up, back, and down again. And then let's do some um, bicep curls. So we're going to start, fingers are spread wide. We're going to do both arms. Fingers are spread wide, then make a fist and bring them up to the, the shoulders. And then exhale, releasing the fingers wide. Inhale up and exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. Two more. Inhale up, exhale down. And last one. Inhale up and exhale down. And then again, just take whatever movement feels good to loosen up that upper body as we get ready to move into some spinal movement. So we're going to start with a twist 
And we're going to do the variation that I think I introduced last week. So in this version of the twist, we're actually going to be moving one hip back at a time. So we're going to twist to the left first. So I'm about midway on my chair. I'm not quite at the end and I'm not all the way back. Just kind of uh, uh, Goldilocks perfect, if you will. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift my left hip back. My right hip, uh, hip is staying where it is. I'm inhaling the arms up and I'm bringing my right hand to the left knee as I bring my left hand either down beside me or maybe it comes behind the chair. Just find the twist that's good for you and then breathe into that twist. Noticing how that feels. And I forgot to mention, if you're standing, this can be done standing as well. You could bring your right hand over to the left hip as you turn. Then we're going to inhale both arms up, bringing the hands back to the knees. We're going to adjust our hips so they're even. And now we're going to slide that right hip back. Left hand comes over to the right knee as the right hand either comes down by the side and we're twisting from the torso or back behind us. And breathe. Then we're going to inhale the arms up, release the hands back to our knees as we adjust our hips so they're even. We're going to inhale the arms out in front. Exhale, we're going to flip the palms. And then inhale, bringing those palms towards the ceiling, pressing the hands up towards the ceiling and pressing the feet into the floor for a full body stretch. And then exhale, let's release the hands down by the side. Pause and just notice how the torso feels after taking those movements. And now we're going to take, we did a little bit of a lateral bend when we did our tricep movement. We're going to take the lateral bend a little bit further if it's comfortable for you. So the way I like to do this again, I'm about midway on the chair. I have my hand down by the side. This is my left hand. And inhale the right arm up. And then exhale over. Now your choice, if you want to make this more of a flow, take it quickly as long as you're doing it so that you're not torquing your torso or your ribs in any way. You want to keep it nice and flowing. You should feel a nice stretch, but no strain. So just imagine if you want to pause and feel that stretch, feel the fingers reach towards the side wall and then feel the stretch all the way down to that lower hip and then back. So we're going to do this a total of five times. Maybe you weren't counting. That's okay. Just take it a few more times. Because as you know, I always forget to count. <laughs> Just do it till it feels okay. And then whenever you feel like you've had enough, just try to make sure you're ending on the side that is the other side from where we started. And then bring the movement to a pause whenever you feel complete. Okay, now once again, we're going to take another full body stretch. So we're going to inhale the arms in front, interlace those fingers, exhale, flip the palms. Inhale, back up, nice full body stretch. And then exhale, let's release the hands back down by the sides. Okay, so for our back bends, we're going to come forward on the chair so that there's room behind you on the chair to place the hands. The palms are going to be on the chair behind you. And again, take this to the level that's comfortable for you. If for some reason your hands aren't going to come all the way back today, allow them to be at the hips or even on the thighs. So we're going to start with the palms in front of us. Just take a moment to center with your breath. And then inhale, extend those arms forward. Exhale, bringing the hands back to where it's comfortable for you. Then lift the sternum. Draw the shoulder blades together. The chin can be level with eyes in front, or if you want to stretch the neck a little bit, you can gaze up towards the ceiling, lifting the chin. And just remember to breathe.
And then exhale, let's release the arms and the shoulders, bringing the palms back to the heart center. And we're going to take it again. Inhale, coming forward. Exhale, coming back behind us. Inhale, lifting from the sternum, draw the shoulder blades together. Find a position of comfort for your head and neck. And then notice you may have a little bit of an arch in the back. And breathe. And then exhale, release the shoulders, allow the arms to come forward. Pausing once again at the heart center, taking a few breaths. And we'll take one more of these. Inhale, the arms come forward. Exhale, we're coming back behind us. Inhale, lifting from the chest, drawing the shoulder blades together. Nice full breaths. And then exhale, release the shoulders, bring the palms together at the heart center, pause and breathe. Now we're going to scoot back to about the middle of the chair again. Make sure your feet are comfortably on the floor in alignment as we started at the beginning. We're going to do a forward fold. And as always, my public service announcement is we don't want to round the back. Most of us are of an age where we need to be very careful of that. And if you're going to do a forward fold standing, you want to make sure that you're bending your knees and hinging from the hips as you come forward. So we're going to start by inhaling the arms up and overhead, lengthening that spine. And then on an exhale, we're going to bring the palms right to the hip creases. Then we're going to inhale, lengthen that spine one more time. On an exhale, the fingers are coming over the top of the thighs. Maybe they start at the, stop at the knees just as you're hinging from the hips. And you've got a nice line from the top of your head to the base of the spine. And then we're going to inhale, coming back up. Hands are once again right at those hip creases. Inhale, lengthen. And then exhale, coming forward again. Maybe you go forward a little bit more, but only as far as you can go, keeping length in the spine. And then inhale, coming back up. And we'll do one more of those. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, coming forward into a forward fold. Feel the length of the spine. And then inhale, coming back up. All right, even though at least here in the United States on the East Coast, we've got another weather forecast that looks like it's going to be a little bit chilly. I'm anxious for spring, so we're going to do some sun salutations to try to draw on that warmth that's long overdue. So in the sun salutations, once again, we've got that little forward fold that we just did. So be mindful as we fold forward that we want to keep the length to the spine. So here we go. Inhaling the arms up and overhead. Exhale, hands come to the hip creases. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold forward. Bring the hands underneath the left thigh. Inhale, partly up. Exhale, come forward. And then inhale, lifting that leg. Then on the exhale, release the foot down. Press the feet into the floor. Inhale, coming back up. Palms together at the heart center. So that's half a round. We're going to take it to the other side. This time we'll be lifting the right leg. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, hands to the hip creases. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, forward fold. Bring the hand, or uh, inhale, come up part way. And then on the exhale, hands underneath the thigh, lifting that thigh up on the inhale. Exhale, release the foot to the floor. Inhale, press the feet in. And coming back to the heart center. Does everybody have it in them to do one more? Okay. Inhale, arms up and overhead. Exhale, hands to the hip creases. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold forward. 
Inhale, part way up, hands underneath the thigh. Lift the leg, release the foot down, press the feet in. Inhale, coming back up. And palms together at the heart center. Let's take it, the last one, inhale up. Exhale, palms to this, hip creases, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, part way up, hands underneath the thigh. Inhale, lengthen. Release the foot to the floor, press the feet in. Inhale, coming back. Wishing for the sun, I hope it hears us. <laughs> okay, let's release the hands down by the side. And we're gonna do um, some knee bends. So we're just gonna extend and bend the knee. Just very gently, kicking the leg out and bringing it back in. So the purpose of this movement is really to just um, lubricate that knee joint. If it hurts, back off. Um, so please don't take it to the point of hurting your knee. I know there's an, a knee injury in here too. So just be very careful of it. And then release the foot down and then take it on the other side. Again, gentle kicks with a focus on feeling that knee joint getting some movement. And then we're going to pause that movement. We're going to come to about the midpoint of the chair again. And we're going to do some movement for the hips. So we're going to start by bringing the right hand on the right knee. And we're going to start by taking little circles. Noticing how the movement of the knee is also connected to sensation in the hip. And then maybe you want to take that circle a little bit bigger. And then you're going to release that foot down. We're going to take that same movement on the other side, gently lifting the leg, taking small circles to start, and then maybe making them a little bit bigger. Noticing how the hip feels as you initiate this movement from the knee, and then release the foot back down. Now we're going to take the, the hand in the, on the right knee again, we're going to lift the leg and then we're going to open up the leg out to the side. Just take it as far as is comfortable and come back in. Let's take an exhale out and then inhale. Or you can reverse it if you'd rather inhale out and exhale in. Just feel what breath feels best for you and take the movement with whatever breath is most comfortable. And we're going to do this for a total of five times as well. So I think that's four. And then last one. And then release the foot down. Now we're going to take the other side, lifting that leg and coming back out and back in and back out, in and out, in and out, and last one, in and out. Let's release the feet to the floor and let's march that out a little bit. And now we're gonna work the feet a little bit. So we're gonna um, extend the right leg long and then we're gonna point the toes and flex. Point and flex. Point and flex, point and flex, point and flex. Then we're going to circle the ankle in one direction and then the other direction. And we're going to release that foot down. Bringing the other leg up, we're going to point the toes and flex, point and flex, point and flex, point and flex. Point and flex point and flex and then we're circling in one direction then the other direction now releasing that foot down we're going to do um, a boat pose from here so we're going to bring one leg up then the other leg up draw the belly in bring one arm up and then the other arm up again drawing that belly in 
Now your choice, if you're comfortable with this, you can hold the arms out, or you may want to bring the hands down, and we're just going to bring the uh, toes out and in, out and in, out and in, out and in. Release the feet down and march it out. Now we're going to come about midway on the chair again, and we're going to take those uh, circles from the pelvis, pelvic area. So we're hinging from the hips, keeping the length of the spine, coming over, and again, nice circles originating from the hip joints, like you're stirring a pot. And then you're going to come back to center, and then we're going to come around in the opposite direction. And then we're going to come back to center and then come back up. So now we're going to do our um, no plop movement that I introduced a couple weeks ago. So I think most of you know what that is. Um, your choice as to whether you hug yourself as you come to standing or you can have your arms out. So I'm going to go with a hug since we're being compassionate. I'm going to hinge from the hips as I come forward. I'm coming to standing, and now I'm hinging from the hips, bending the knees. That butt is coming back, and it's controlled. We're coming back into the chair with no plop. Okay, we're going to do three more of those. Inhale, press the feet into the floor. Hinge from the hips, coming straight up. And then exhale, bend the knees, hinge from the hips, butt comes back, no plop into the chair. Two more. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, coming back down. No plop. And on this last one, we're going to come back down, and then we'll come up one more time for our blast off. Inhale up. Exhale, coming back down. No plop. And then for our blast off, the arms come up over the head when we come standing. So inhale, coming up. And there we are with our blast off. So let's reorient our body facing the chair. And again, I'm doing this on the side so that you can see me. If you want to have the chair facing forward, just have it whichever way feels good for you. My feet are about hip distance apart, and we're coming up on the toes and back on the heels, just as we did in the beginning of class. Up on the toes, back on the heels, up on the toes, back on the heels, up on the toes, back on the heels, and once more, up on the toes, back on the heels, pause the movement of the feet, and then we're going to do our coat sleeve, so we're just going to allow the upper body to turn, maybe the heel comes off the floor as you bend the knee, a little bit of a swinging action, just releasing any tension that you may be holding in the body. And then pause that movement. We've got our um, mountain pose, and we're just going to do some of the uh, arm salutations again. So palms together at the heart center. Opening up, inhale, bringing the arms up and overhead or to wherever is comfortable, and then exhale, palms back to the heart center. Inhaling up. Exhale, coming back down. Inhale up. Exhale, coming back down, and inhaling up. Exhale, coming back down, and last one. Inhale up, exhale, coming back down. I'm going to turn and face the chair. We're going to do a series of warrior movements. If your knee is feeling cranky, do not feel that you need to do the full forward bend of that knee. Just do a little micro bend, so don't, don't put too much strain on that knee. So we're starting with the feet about hip distance apart, and I'm stepping my left foot back, stepping my left foot back, my right foot is forward, and I'm bending that front knee. Then I'm going to inhale one arm up, then the other arm up into a warrior one. 
And then I'm going to inhale, straight the knee, exhale, release the hands down. Now if you need to have one hand on a chair, feel free to do that, or you can do both hands, whichever is good for your balance. So let's see what it looks like if it's just one hand. So we're going to um, exhale, bend the front knee, inhale, just one arm up. We're going to lift from the chest, but we're still holding on to this other, with the other hand for balance. Now if that balance starts to feel good and you want to bring the other arm up, that's what we're going to do. And now we're going to inhale, straighten the leg, exhale the arms down. Again, always feel free to hold onto the chair if you need it. We're going to do a ser two series of a flow and then we're going to hold the posture. So exhale, bend the front knee, inhale the arms up. Exhale, straighten the front knee arms come down. Exhale, bend the front knee, inhale the arms up. Inhale, straighten the front knee, exhale the arms down. Now this one we're going to hold. So we're going to exhale the front knee, bending it. Inhale the arms up, gazing over the horizon, maybe lifting that chest a little bit, maybe opening up the arms a little bit wide, or still holding on to the chair if you need to. And breathe. Straighten the knee, release the hands down. Step the back foot next to the front. Now we're going to take it on the other side. So we're going to step the right foot back, left foot is forward. We're going to hold on with one arm to start. We're going to bend that front knee as we lift the arm. Sorry, I lifted my arm first. If that's feeling okay, you might want to bring the other arm up or keep it on the chair, your choice. Then we're going to inhale, straighten the front knee, exhale the arms down. We're going to take it again. Exhale, bend the front knee, inhale up. Exhale and inhale. Last one. Bend the front knee, inhale the arms up. We're going to hold it a little bit. Remembering to breathe, straighten the arm, straighten the leg, release the arms down, hands come back to the chair, step the foot together, and then let's march it out. Sorry I got confused with my verbs, my wording again, but I think we've done this enough that you know what I'm trying to say. Okay, so let's do our tree movement, or tree balance. So I've got the right leg here next to the chair. And again, if you want to do this seated, you always can. Right leg is, is going to be the strong leg. We're turning the left foot out. Left heel to right ankle. Or bring the sole of the foot to the calf. Your choice. Find the position where your foot feels stable and balanced. And then once you feel that, find a place to focus your gaze. And then maybe you bring the palms to the heart center. Maybe you extend the arms out. Your choice for your tree. Breathe. Holding the chair if you need that to stabilize the balance. And then exhale. Release the foot down. Let's march it out. Now we're going to take it over to the other side. Now it's our left foot, which is our strong leg. So that left leg is feeling nice and strong. We're turning the right leg out. Heel to ankle or foot to calf. Your choice. Again, find that position that feels good for you. Find a place to focus your gaze. Note that the position on this side may be very different than it was on the other side. Remember to breathe. And then release that foot down. Let's march it out. Perhaps taking those coat sleeve movements again. Gentle movements from side to side. And then let's do three breaths of joy. 
So if you recall, the breath of joy is three inhales with three different arm movements. So the first inhale is one, out to the side, and then up overhead. And then hinging from the hips, we're going to exhale coming down. Let's do it three times. Last one. Now we're going to turn and face the chair. Hands are on the back of the chair. We're going to walk backwards as far as is comfortable. Head and tailbone are in alignment if that feels good for you. And then if you want to get a little bit more stretch in the calves, you may want to come up on your toes, lifting the heels. And just pedal the feet from side to side a little bit. And then as you feel ready, you're going to walk towards the back of the chair. And we're going to come back into the chair. And we're going to sit down. And we're going to close our class with one of my all-time favorites, combined with Louis Armstrong, Cassandra, I got it right this time. <laughs> so we're going to do um, Israel Kamakawa's Somewhere Over the Rainbow com combined with What a Wonderful World. And I know on a day that feels sad with what's happening in current events, I'm trying to think of compassion and think of the other part of our life that isn't so sad. So hopefully this song will help lift spirits. And um, I know many of you know the moves, but I'll, re I'll review them. We start off by offering energy out to the world. Then we invite it in, bringing it in. Then we spread it all around. Then we have our somewhere half a rainbow. Then the other half of the rainbow. And then a full rainbow. And then there's a lullaby in the first verse, and the rest of the times we're just going to give ourselves a nice little compassionate and loving hug. And then the first verse, we're going to stretch each of our fingers like we did in our fingers exercise, and then the wrist. And then we're going to pause in this, in this version and go to It's a Wonderful World. And in a wonderful world, we start with the palms together. And we're going to take one arm up, following the hand with our gaze. And then the other hand up, following it with our gaze. Then both hands up. And then one hand comes to the hip as we think to ourselves, what a wonderful world. We're hugging the world and then bringing that love back into ourselves. And so, um, let me see, there's another verse here. We do that same thing until we get to the colors of the rainbow, and the colors of the rainbow are just like in somewhere over the rainbow. We're taking half a rainbow, and then we see the faces of the people outside that are holding hands. So we're going to just shake hands, and then we're going to reverse the clasp of the hands. And what they're really saying is, I love you. Okay? And then we conclude with our Someday I Wish Upon a Star, which is this movement. And then the other side, moving it in time to the tempo. And then we close the way we open with the rainbow and then giving energy out, bringing it in, and spreading it all around. Now I know it's a lot easier than I said it because you've all done it before. So here we go. Let's see how we make this happen. Okay, so let's forget it. Okay. Offering that energy out to the world. Then bring it back in.
for the world. Take a few more breaths like that. With each inhale, bringing in love and compassion for you and exhaling out love and compassion for the world. And then bringing the palms together if that feels comfortable to you. I honor the place in you in which the entire universe dwells. I honor the place in you which is of love, compassion, peace, and wisdom. When you are in that place in you, and I am in that place in me, we are one. The light in me honors the light in each and every one of you. It's been a true joy to be sharing Thursday mornings with you for the past eight weeks. And I will unmute, or I will, excuse me, I will uh,